Sachs, and today I'd like to welcome Mark Strauss. Welcome, Mark. I'm delighted that you're willing to come here and do this show for us. Um, now, you've done something that uh, I thought was almost impossible to do with DNA, but let's start with what got you into doing this with the, looking into the DNA end of it at all? Well, well thank you. Um, I had been studying my family's history for the past five years, and I had taken my family back um, probably to the early 1800s, in some cases beyond, both my family and my wife's family, and found records for the family um, that um, helped us put a family tree together. But in, in, in recent years, I, 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 um, I, I've reached a stopping point with, with known records and, um, and decided that I would try to explore DNA as a way to connect to other people who might share a family relationship, but then might also um, lead to more information about my family that can fill in some missing pieces. Okay, now there's several different kinds of uh, tests. There's the Y-DNA test, which has been around for a while. It follows the male, male line or the mitochondria, which follows the female line. But you did the autosomal, and the autosomal is sort of a cross. Well, I actually have done all three okay. tests. I started with the Y test that you know showed who I was related to. Um, it, it, the, the, um, on my male paternal side, father to son to son to son, and I made some interesting um, connections, but but we were never able to establish the paper trail because if you share somebody's Y DNA, it could go back, you know, ten generations yeah. or, oh, more, are, or more or more, that, and yeah. and even though you, we may find some people who who um, are. Jewish Ashkenazi who share the Y DNA, it, and they're, none of them were actually from the same yeah. area that my family was from. So um, I then decided to take it up another notch. I, I looked into the autosomal, and the autosomal is a, the test that tests. Um, it, it, it's, it's not. It doesn't. It, it's not related to the X or Y. Chromosome. It's anything it's, that's not the sex chromosome, right. not the X or Y, and it has. It's the 22 pairs or 44 um, chromosomes that that are non-sexual in terms of orientation. And they they test about over 700,000 locations. Yeah, I mean, basically, what it is is that they say that the chromosome one there's 2,200 yeah. genes. And then it goes to 22, or there's 700, and there are variations in between. And the so, Y has the smallest number. Yeah. Exactly. And and the, in, the most interesting aspect of that is that um, you can, once you start testing people with the auto, autosomo, and you start connecting to other people who share your DNA in, in large proportions, different sites allow you to do what they use a, what they call a chromosome browser that allows you to see wh what markers on the individual chromosomes are shared. And by looking at those markers, you can, be, once you understand how these people are related to you, you can start connecting people and saying, okay, a group of people who share chromosome, you know, 10 from marker, you know, 50,000 to yeah. 55,000, if they're all related to you via your, your, your DNA Now, is that, that's an example of, of a composite, so you're showing... Well, this is an example of, of and I'll, I'll talk about this in a moment, I, I recently connected to some people who were connected to my Strauss side of the DNA, um, and we were able to find basically anybody who shares the Strauss heritage from this one part of Hungary that's now Slovakia where my family was from, there are certain segments that they all seemed to share. So if I see somebody who has those markers, I immediately know that they come from my Strauss heritage. And, and we started testing different cousins and isolating the various branches of my family. So if I test, if I look at somebody's autosomal um, results, and they're showing a, a, a strong connection to me, I can immediately now know if they're from 
my mother's side, which was Russian Lithuanian, or my father's side, which was Hungarian, now Slovakian. And I immediately know what side of the family they're from by seeing which segments that we connect to. And I think what you've done is, is pretty remarkable in that uh, uh, for a long time we've been saying that, that it's pretty hard to do this for Ashkenazi Jews because there was so much intermarriage. But you've got enough that you can look at so you can... Well, you're right. And, and they say that um, all Ashkenazi Jews are traced back to something like 93 people within 32 oh. yeah. generations. And, and, you know, some say that, you know, the fact that you find a cousin, most Jews are, are cousins. Cousin, yeah. and, 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 and that may be true. And, and part of the problem also is the fact that we were small tribal groups. We intermarried within our own group and you would have second cousins marrying second cousins and or first, and, cousins, or, or first cousins and and it, and it, and, it sh and as a consequence for the autosomal results it's showing a much closer relationship um, for people of Ashkenazi Ashkenazi heritage than for other folks so, so they actually change the algorithms once okay. they know you're you're Ashkenazi and they the, and, and, and it, they're showing um, it used to be that they would show you as being much closer yeah. than they are. Now they've changed it. And so, uh, uh, frankly, I only pay attention to people that are predicted to be second to third cousins, in some cases a fourth cousin if they come from the same region or area that my family was from and they give some information or they have the same family name. But, you know, it, 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 but as a consequence of the fact that there was so much intermarriage yeah. and the results Ha, um, are somewhat skewed. When I first started looking at the results, it was very disappointing. I, you know, I first started um, seeing, um, you know, people who were predicted to be second to third cousins. I, I, I started by just doing a search of family names that were in my family or areas of geography where my family was from and then reaching out to people and a lot of people responded but we never found a connection. So I, at first, for the first six months I started working with my DNA, I, I didn't think that this was gonna be of much value to me yeah. and I almost, um, stopped. But I started getting a few minor successes. The, the first success wasn't actually with my own family. We also had, had my wife's family tested through her brother um, so that we could do the Y DNA for, for the family as well as the autosomal. And, um, and immediately when we had him tested, one of the people that showed a very close relationship to him had um, a surname of my wife and, and my brother-in-law's um, um, grandfather, which was the family name, was Sam, and they originally came from Bronsbach, Germany. So I reached out to this woman, her name was Judy Sam, she now lives in London, and I reached out to her and I said, um, you know, you yeah. share my, my, my wife's family name, um, my, um, her grandfather came from Bronsbach, you show a close DNA relationship, um, to my brother-in-law who did the test. I'm curious about who, your, your Sam ancestry. So she immediately wrote back and said, well, my f grandfather said that the family came from Frankfurt, but in my research, we found that the family came from Baden-Württemberg. Other than that, I know nothing about the Sam family, and I'd like to, to, to find out a little bit more if, if you have any information. And it turned out that um, Bronsbach, where my wife's grandfather was from, was from, was in Baden-Württemberg. And we had gotten, in our research on the family, we had gotten a family tree that was being created by a Jewish museum that was being formed in Bronsbach to celebrate the Jews who had formerly lived in the community. And they had records going back to the 1600s that included the first um, Jewish person who had settled in Bronsbach who happened to be a Psalm who was wow. with my wife's ancestor. Well, it's interesting that they even had last names at Bob. Well, actually, it, it, his name was Psalm Sam Marks, and his son started taking the name okay. Psalm as the last name. Okay. So the first person, it was more the patronymic right. name, which was, you know, the okay. name of the father, which is the way traditionally yeah. we would, would um, name ourselves. 
But um, through the, the information that they provided, it also showed in the 1800s a listing of all of these Psalms who had immigrated to the United States oh, wow. with their birth dates and, and when they left. And it included my wife's grandfather, um, Jacob, who became Jake Sam, but it was Jacob Psalm in Germany, his birth date and when he left. But it also showed another cousin of his with the name um, Hirsch Psalm with his birth date, who had also immigrated to the United States. When I spoke to this woman, Judy Psalm, she had the information for her great grandfather, who was Heinrich Psalm, who took on the name Harry um, when he was in the United States. And, um, and the birth date was the same of, as Hirsch Psalm, who had then immigrated to um, America and was listed on this list. So we knew that, this, that these persons were the same. So all of a sudden, she also had this family tree that went back to the 1600s. And we even had a memoir that a family member had given us that told the story of what this life was like for the Psalms in Bronzebach. Now let's get back to what we were talking about with the DNA. There's three companies that do the DNA. Uh, and you've had it tested with all three of them? I did. I started with Family Tree DNA I, um, and with, the, with all okay. three tests. And the nice thing about Family th Tree DNA is it connects you, you, if you agree, it will give you the name of the, the person's name, their email, and they'll often list what their family member, family surnames were, so you can find a relationship. And if you have a close connection, you can immediately email these people, and they generally respond within and, uh, a short period of time. Family Tree also has the many projects that you join. Yes, and, uh, to surname help projects, geographic and, projects, uh, and, uh, and, and, yeah. and I've joined a few, and they've been very helpful in sharing information. Some of the other sites um, aren't as helpful, and, and, and Family Tree also gives you the chromosome browser, and you can immediately connect and see how you're connected for people that are closely related to you. The other site is the, um, one of the sites is 23andMe, and 23andMe um, is, is, gives you the chromosome browser, um, but it's not as forthcoming in sh on sharing who these people are and how you're related to them. So you're um, really sort of writing to and, them and, blindly. And then, the, and then the last one is Ancestry, and yeah. Ancestry gives you, um, um, it, 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 it tells you who you're related to. You have to sort of write to them blindly through their site, and there's no chromosome browser to actually okay. see how, what chromosomes you're connected to. But the one thing about 23andMe that was, was actually a little frustrating is that because 23andMe um, was created not just for genealogy purposes, the, the, when they originally created the site, they were trying to also help people look at their DNA and tell from medical yeah. purposes what what you um, what you might be susceptible to, yeah. susceptible to from a DNA perspective. And about a year and a half ago, the FDA said you can't do that anymore. It's it's unproven. So if you're in the United States, you cannot get that information for if you've tested within the last year and a half. If you've tested earlier, you yeah. can still get that information. I think it's not and only that, that it's unproven. I think they were afraid that people would do things or take medicine for something without consulting their doctors. And they felt it met, the information should come through a medical person. Uh, but the, the interesting thing is you found out that you could do it from other countries? Well, actually, you can. Some people can, if you, if you test from Canada or from Europe, you can still get that medical results on 23andMe. And there are actually some sites where you can send the information that you get from 23andMe, and they'll still give you your medical results. But, as a f as, but the fact that a lot of people aren't interested in genealogy who yeah. use 23andMe has created a situation where if you find you have a close DNA relationship to somebody on that site, um, I found that only 
a quarter of the people will even respond to an email request for more information or to allow you to see yeah. their chromosome the, and, and share the, the genome. So it's, it's, been a, it's been a struggle, or it's been frustrating for me to, from a genealogical point of view to make some connections. And yet I've had probably the most success for my own family um, with 23andMe. Right. It, it began with the fact that my grandfather, my Strauss grandfather, Louis Strauss, who came from this town of Zetny, um, Slovakia, came to Scranton, Pennsylvania in the early 1900s with his sister. Um, they both, um, his, his sister married somebody who started a produce business. My grandfather joined that produce mm -hmm. business and, um, and they both um, were very involved in the produce business um, emanating from, from Scranton. His sister, um, Nina, Nina Strauss, married a gentleman, William Rosenstein, which started a produce company, William Rosenstein and Sons, which is still around 100 oh, right. years later. And his, the ancestors, the grandchildren, great-grandchildren mm -hmm. from this family are still involved with the produce business oh, in Scranton. Um, and through the 23andMe, somebody who had a fairly high percentage of, of autosomal DNA um, connection to me, I reached out to the person, the person agreed to share information, and it turned out that his name was um, Jamie Rosenstein, and he, um, his family was from Scranton, Pennsylvania. And I immediately recognized the Rosenstein mm -hmm. name and said, you must be related to my, um, my grandfather's sister, Nina, who married William Rosenstein. And sure enough, this um, Jamie Rosenstein was um, her great grandson, and wow. and by having this information, I autom I I was able to then review the DNA, see the Strauss, what chromosomes the Strauss DNA was was being shown as shared with me, and I could then connect and see what where those same segments were shared with other people who might have an Hungarian heritage, and then we be, I began to isolate and um, the sort of the, the, the shared Strauss DNA and, and develop um, and, and connect to other people who are from that region. Um, what also ended up happening th through that connection is about six months later, I get, I see a new result on 23andMe that show that there was a person who had even a greater degree of shared DNA through um, um, through that site, but they also shared my Y DNA because oh. 23andMe gives both the Y and the mitochondrial DNA results with the autosomal results when you take an autosomal test. And by reviewing that information, seeing that information, I immediately knew that if they shared a high percentage of autosomal with C connection, and they had the Y DNA, then the chances are there was a fairly recent Strauss connection through this person to my family. So I, I reached out to the person. I sent an email within you know a half hour or so, and um, and I made a plea because knowing 23 and <laughs> knowing my track record with sending messages to 23 and me I wasn't sure if this person would ever write back but I immediately sent a note saying hey listen you know you're you have one of the highest percentages of shared DNA of anybody on this site you also have the Y DNA connection which means that we're, we're we come through the same maternal side my great-grandfather um, was um, my paternal great grandfather yeah. was um, um, Adolf Strauss or yeah. Avraham Strauss. His father was Burko or Bertrand Strauss. They came from Zetny, Slovakia. I'd like to know how you might be connected to me. Almost within you know ten minutes, oh. I get an email from him, this person back saying, "Yes, um, I am a Strauss. My family." Um, came from this same area. My great grandfather or great great grandfather was also Bertrand Strauss. Um, we're definitely related. And slowly but surely, he started sharing information about the family that was just fascinating. It turns out that this person um, had studied in 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 uh, the the family had stayed in um, in, in Hungary then 
became, what became um, Czechoslovakia and now is Slovakia. The family ran a pharmacy in the town right next to where my family lived. And, and the, the most remarkable thing is that um, I wrote a memoir. We visited this area. I researched all the Strausses who lived around this town of Zetny and found a photograph from the 1930s that showed. I um, have it up there now. Uh, yes, that showed this pharmacy with the name Alex Strauss stenciled there, on the window. His... And this guy who I connected to, his father was Alex Strauss, who ran the pharmacy before the war and then went, went um, um, was, was sent to concentration camps and the work camps in Hungary, survived, came back to run the pharmacy even after um, the communists took over and they had an apartment behind the pharmacy where the family was raised and he was raised behind those stenciled windows and um, grew up in, in this little town next to, to Zetny. It's, 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 it's amazing sometimes the kind of connections you make that you wouldn't even expect or, or dream of and, and yet oh, you're able oh, to it, find, find, find things. I mean it is fascinating and the person ended up studying in Prague, coming to this country, and, 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 or coming to Canada, and, and, and raising a family in Canada. And he, um, he was so grateful because he grew up with very few cousins, and we grew up thinking that our entire family, um, my grandfather and his sister, were the only ones who survived, and that the entire family in Slovakia and um, Hungary had been killed during the war, and then to find this one branch, and through him we connected actually to another branch of the family that survived, and we even heard stories about other people who came back, who one of which fought in the um, Spanish Civil War, um, another whose brother became um, a bullfighter in Spain and then came back to Kosici, which is a larger city near where our family was from. So it's, it's just been an amazing discovery. I call this the DNA of reconnecting <laughs> family because we all thought that the family um, was no longer, there was no other remnants of this family around. I think what you've done, are, and you, you haven't mentioned it, but you must have spent thousands of hours doing all of this comparison. Well, it, it, it's, it is time consuming. And basically what I, what I, you know, when I come home and I don't have work that I'm trying to take care of and I'm sitting, you know, the TV will be in the background and my wife and I have a, like a home office in our, in our bedroom in, in, in New York. And we, um, we were both, my wife designs magazines and she's working at her computer. I'm sitting with a laptop yeah. and I'm, I'm basically looking at the chromosomes and seeing who these clo new close relationships, how these people connect to me, and I keep a record of the, the parts of each chromosome um, where I know that there's a connection and, how, and where that connection lies. And I start keeping track so that I immediately now know if I look at the chromosomes, I can tell which side of the family they're from and how these people might be related to me. And then when we share information, we get, people will send me a, 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 a memoir or they'll send me a tree that oftentimes we're now able to connect them to our family. I think there has to be a way to better than, uh, better, faster than what you're doing. Somebody has to write a program to do some of this connecting and, and, and checking it out between them. Um, because it obviously, it's, you're dealing with numbers and so on. There's gotta be some way of, of computerizing that because uh, as you said, you spend many, many hours doing that. I can see that that would be very time consuming. And our younger generation, they want everything instantly. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, mean, I I started when they were, doing genealogy when we didn't have all of that on uh, anything online that to, that we could uh, research. So it has has changed a lot. And I think one of the things that, that um, are important in what you've done is you can't depend only on the DNA. You've got to do the research and find the paperwork too that connects connects you to it and connects you to the to the old, um, the town you were from or, or so on. That it, you can't go only on the DNA. No, you can't. I mean, basically, I mean, I'm lucky 
that I was able to find records that, that, yeah. that, and, and, and family members who had enough information that they knew the town where the family originally last came from in Europe, what the surnames were, and, that, and, and now that there's so much available online, I could expand that information and go back a few generations. But um, I think so much of that information is being lost today. And if you don't know to ask the right questions while your grandparents or your parents are alive, you, that information gets lost forever. Yeah, I mean, there is some, and there's certainly, and then the other thing to remember, too, is not everything is online, that there's, that you still have to contact the, the town or the mayor. Very often the mayor of the town will tell you um, where to look. Uh, I've, I've written to small towns, and I just wrote to the mayor, and I said, please pass this on to whoever can give me the information. And at one time it was a priest who uh, had, the, had the records. But I don't think that that kind of thing is always going to be on, on, online. Yeah, and, it's true. Um, uh, various churches and so on will not, uh, you know, are still keeping those, those records um, not, not online. Uh, so people have to realize that they have to look at other things and you still have to prove it even though you've proved it with DNA. You still have to prove it. And you were lucky that, that people did answer you. No, it is. I mean, I think when we find that there's a connection, people are very eager to share. And um, I mean, a lot of times it's frustrating for both myself and the other person when it shows that we're connected, but we have no idea yeah. where the connection lies. Yeah. Well, I think that's the way Family Tree originally started. They had uh, been a Greenspan found somebody in South America that he was sure must have been related because the names were so so similar, they came from similar towns. That's when they, then he first did the Y-DNA and uh, that's how it, that, that family tree DNA got started. Uh, and so, yeah, it, 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 you can't actually do 100% proof of that you're a first cousin or second cousin, but it shows you that you're related or not related. Well, in case in point, I'm gonna do I agree with you, and, and, and you know when you look at like JewishGen.org, and they have a Family Finder site that yeah. where you can connect to other Strausses who yeah. might come from from Hungary or Slovakia. You often see that these towns that people s s say that their family are from is like 15 kilometers away or 15 miles away from where your family was from, and they spell the name slightly different. Like in my case, we always spelt the name Strauss with two S's. Um, and, and somebody else might have spelt it with one S. Or, and originally in Hungary, it was a Z at the end, S-T-R-A-U-S-Z. And then before that in the German, it was a double yeah. F. So, so, so the, the, the fact is, some people say, oh, well, we, it's, that's not the same area. My family came yeah. from this town. Or my and, family. And, and, and we spelt it differently. But for those of us, now that I've been there, and I see the sizes of these little towns and how closely they're connected to, and there may have only been three or four Jewish families there. Well, thank you very much. We've sort of run out of time now, so I appreciate your coming. And thank you very much. And I hope uh, this has helped some people. Well, thank you.